want to say hi to, the video. You want to say hi to all the viewers on my channel? <laughs> so. <laughs> hi everyone, so I'm back with a deployment video update slash advice and tips and all that good stuff. So without further ado, I'm just going to get started because I have like a long list. And so yeah, if you have any tips or tricks of your own, definitely leave it down below. I would like to do another video that's a little bit more in depth um, with some of these topics. So if you do have any questions, let me know. All right, so let's get started with deployment safety. What does deployment safety mean? First of all, if your spouse is deploying, don't let the whole world know that your husband is gone, especially um, people you don't know. So if someone walks up to you and asks you or mentions it or whatever, and you don't have any idea of who they are, don't right away just say, oh yeah, by the way, you know, my husband's gone and it's been so hard and blah, 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 because it puts you at risk. Is keep your doors locked at all times. Uh, this means your front screen as well, because if someone's gonna try and break into your house and they're trying to break in and your screen door is locked, you, more than likely you're gonna hear it. Um, also, if you're not expecting anyone that day or expecting anyone at all, don't open the door right away. Or if you do open it, make sure your screen door is locked. That way, if someone's gonna try and barge in, at least you have that barrier there. Um, but yeah, always ask who's at the door. If you don't feel comfortable, don't answer it at all. Please invest in a security system. Uh, currently, I have one. It's great. I like it. I can control it through my phone. Um, but if you don't have a security system, another thing that you can do is if you feel like someone is trying to break into your house, um, definitely use that panic button if you have one on your car. So if your car is parked outside and someone is trying to break in, use that panic button. It will be really loud. Neighbors will look out their windows and it might scare the burglar or the person who's at your door. It might scare them off. So there's a trick if you do not have a security system. Um, another thing is keep emergency phone numbers um, with you. Definitely put it on your phone. Have one on the wall downstairs, on the wall upstairs in your bedroom, just in case. This could include phone numbers like point of contact for your husband's unit, uh, fire, fire, Department, obviously, police department, 911, all that good stuff because, oh, and the Red Cross, just in case. All right, so let's move on to the deployment must-do list. Um, just things that I thought of, like, at the top of my head that I would like to share with you. Uh, so number one is make sure your power of attorney is squared away. It could be a special one. It could be a general one, but at least have that piece of paper just in case you need it, in case you have to go get an ID, in case you have to go to court. Power of attorneys are really great. Another great thing to do is give your, like if you have a trusted family member, give them a power of attorney because not only can something happen to your spouse, but something might happen to you. Um, you have to think about those things. And so giving a power of attorney to a trusted family member might be really helpful if for some reason you end up in the hospital or something. Um, I don't wanna bring you guys down, I just wanna tell you that something could happen. Uh, number two, cancel or freeze your self, your husband's cell phone or your spouse's cell phone when they leave. Now, not all telephone companies do this. Uh, the one that I'm with is Verizon, and what they do is I could do like a no bill freeze. So that means I won't get charged for his account, but they put his stuff on hold so his term continues when he gets back. So that's kind of a bummer, but at least I'm not paying for it, right? Um, okay, so number three is talk financial stuff with your husband. Make a financial plan because you want to know where all that money that's coming in is going. And so what my husband and I did was created a calendar. You can do this on the computer. I'm really old school, so I do it on paper. I have a calendar. It has every single bill that we owe with the amount, when it's due, and all that good stuff, whether it is electronic like an online bill whether it's something that we pay a uh, paper so I have like a little asterisk by all the stuff that is automatic like it comes straight out of our account and then I have like a NA which is not automatic uh, next to the ones that I have to look out for in the mail so if that makes any sense 
uh, yeah, this makes a little sense to me, but if you are like me, who has to do all the budgeting and all of the bill pay now, um, it's really helpful. At least it helps me. So, also, with that said, check your bank account at least once every two days. That way you can check to see if any of your checks have cleared, if any of your bills have cleared, whether or not you're um, over or under in your bank account or your checking account or whatever. And it also helps you to deter identity theft or people from using your bank account because some charges might come out that you may not recognize and it's good to question those because you never know. All right, so next is uh, talk to your creditors. If your husband or your spouse is active duty, obviously if they're deployed, um, definitely talk to the creditors to see if they have what's called the SCRA. I believe it's the Soldiers Relief or Soldiers credit relief act something like that i will put it on the screen anyways this is awesome why because it will lower your interest rate some credit card companies um for example capital one will lower your interest rate so if you have credit with them it will go from like whatever high percentage you are to about four percent which is awesome and they pay back all of the interest you've already paid so that is awesome your husband does not have to be deployed um he could just be an active duty member and you could be qualified. So check with all your credit companies because that will save you a lot of money. Uh, all right, so make sure your ID or, yeah, your ID is not going to expire while your husband is gone. That means your military ID. Make sure that's not going to expire. That way you don't have a headache of worrying about that, like when it's time to get a new one. So for example, Chris and I's uh, IDs were going to expire because my husband was supposed to be out of the military already. Um, so because of his extension, we had to go get another ID and good thing we got it before he left because that's one less thing we have to worry about. Next is set up your Skype. If you have Skype on your computer, um, you can also get it on your iPhone as an app. Get Skype. Um, your husband or your spouse might be able to use this. Not true all the time because of internet connections over there. They might be a little slow, it might not work. So that's pretty sad, but it can happen. But if you do have it, definitely set that up. There are other ones that are available, like for iPhone, you can have FaceTime if your husband or your spouse has Wi-Fi. I'm just gonna say spouse because this is getting redundant. Okay, so next is get on the URG slash FRG mailing list. Yes, something that a lot of military spouses try to avoid is getting involved with their FRG or their URG. But let me tell you, if you get on that email list, you will get all the updates. And not only that, but check Facebook because your husband's unit, there I go again, your spouse's unit might be on Facebook and it'll give you some updates. Um, you might check to see if your husband is in one of those pictures. It's really awesome. So I'm lucky that my husband's unit has a, a Facebook page because I can see everything that's going on. Obviously not violating OPSEC. I don't know when he's coming back or anything like that. So anyway, make a list of items your spouse might need while he's gone or she's gone. Definitely make a list of snacks he likes or she likes, uh, magazines, books, whatever they want. That way when you're at the store you're not like trying to think about all the stuff that they might like or might not. And um, for an added bonus, maybe get a list of stuff that your husband's or your spouse's soldiers might like because you know they like to share those boxes when they're out there. So maybe if you like put something nice in there like a snack that his soldier might like, um, yeah it'll make them happy. So anyways, next is work out a deployment budget. Uh, this means figuring out how much money is coming in and how much money is going out. If you want to save money, if you want to save money for a vacation when they get back, like work out, work all that detail out before they leave. That way you're on the same page because the last thing that you want to do is argue about money while they're deployed. Uh, next thing is, um, oh, I want to add that if your spouse has a car that they're leaving behind that you're not going to be driving, definitely call your insurance company and put that on a storage, uh, like a storage, what's it called, status. That way you don't, you're not paying for car insurance for a car you're not driving. That's what we did. Um, it's saving us, I believe, like $100 a month. So check that out. And let me just move on to uh, 
the next question that I received was, how are your children coping with your husband being gone? That was one of the questions that I wanted to answer because it's really important. Um, my kids are four years old and two years old, and they ask every single day where their daddy is. It's really hard. Um, it's really sad sometimes because I do. I wish I could tell them that daddy's coming home soon, and they don't really have a concept of time yet. So I can't say in a few months or you know in this amount of months he's going to be back. Like they don't understand understand that. All they understand is daddy's not here. So. Unfortunately, the neighbors across the street have a really loud car that is very similar to my husband's car. And so anytime that goes by, they run to the window and they think daddy's home. So a lot of the times I have to take them out to the garage and say, look, here's daddy's car. He got on the plane. He's working. So right now it's he's working right now. So when my little one asks, now my oldest like tells him daddy's at work, daddy's at work, daddy's at work. So as long as you're and you know another thing that's really helpful is my husband sends postcards in the mail for my kids and so anytime I get a postcard I'll sit down with them and I'll read it to them and so it brings them a little closer we send videos we send pictures um, you know they get to Skype with each other so that keeps them really close so right now it's a good it's good right now they are actually a lot stronger than me because they basically kick me out of bed every morning you know how it is, military wives, uh, when your husbands are gone and you just don't feel like waking up or getting up and you just want to be lazy all day. Yeah, they keep me going. So I'm really lucky that I have them. And um, we do a lot of activities. We do a lot of fun stuff. We draw pictures for daddy uh, and all that good stuff. So they're coping really well right now. Uh, next question that I had was, how has communication been with your husband? So the communication has been really well these last few weeks, but that's about to change. Um, it's going to change because my husband isn't like where he's supposed to be at without giving so much information out. Um, yeah, he's just hasn't ended up where he's supposed to be. So the communication is probably going to be not so much. I was able to Skype. We were able to email, iMessage, all that good stuff. But the internet connection over there is really, really slow and really, really bad. And unfortunately, like sometimes I'll, we'll be on Skype and it'll just cut off and I, like he won't be able to get back on. So then I'm back here sitting, waiting for him to get back on. And then if he doesn't, I worry, like, did something happen? Blah, 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 blah. So it's been really good these last three weeks, but that's about to change and expect it to change. Don't always expect a phone call. And the advice that they usually get is that they're not supposed to call you every day because one, that gives you the idea that you're going to be able to communicate with your soldier every single day. So if they miss a day, then you're left with like, you're nervous. You're nervous about why didn't they call because they always call. They're, they're calling me every day. So their, their advice is usually Try not to call every day because then your spouse will get used to it. And when you don't call, that's when they start to worry. So if you don't hear from your husband or your spouse every single day, that's okay. Um, like they always say, no news is good news. And that brings me to the next topic. Basically is stay away from the news on TV. That will torture you because you will be on there looking to see if your husband is on TV if you see them, where they're at, what's going on here, what's going on there. And a lot of times it's not even true. Um, if you're big into politics, I'm really not big into politics. Lately I have been because I've been wanting like extra information as to what's going on and it's really not helping. It's really confusing me. So try to stay away from television when it comes to the news and what's going on. Um, you know, if your husband or your spouse is communicating with you and everything's all good and just trust them. Trust that everything's going to be okay. Um, have faith. Keep positive. Um, and stay motivated. There probably will be a part two to this video because there's a lot more that I want to talk about. But for now, I'm just going to leave you with a huge, huge announcement coming up in the next video um, concerning Chris and I. And um, yeah, so I'm going to leave you with that. that what do they call it? cliffhanger. I don't know if that's what they call it, 
But I'm going to leave you with that. So if you have any questions or comments or anything, I apologize this video is really long, but I haven't done like one of these talking videos in such a long time and there was so much information that I wanted to share with you and I set up my light so hopefully I will be able to film a lot more. Um, I apologize, it's like really washing me out, but hey, at least you can see my face, right? <laughs> Anyways, so uh, yeah, let me leave you with one thing that I didn't even show you, I don't think, is this calendar called Deployment Days. You can get it at the ACS building if you have an ACS building. Um, and what it does is it has like a lot of tips and tricks as to like what you should do, what you should talk about, what you should explain to your children, all this good stuff. And what I've been using it for is to cross out the days like my husband's been gone and when we've Skyped, how many days are left and all that good stuff. So uh, this is good for your kids to see visually um, as to how many days left. My kids don't really understand it, but for me it's good because I can like check it off and then like one day down is one day closer to seeing them. So it's really helped me a lot. Another thing I want to mention is if you have iPhone, there's an app out there called um, Doing Time. Uh, look for that because it's like a pie chart and you've probably already seen it, but it's a pie chart and it tells you like the percentage or how many days are left for homecoming. Um, and you can set that all up. It's really awesome. It's very motivating to see it like visually that time is running out and um, you're gonna see your spouse soon. So yeah, check that out, it's called Doing Time. If not, there are other apps that are like countdown apps, they're free. And um, yeah, so I look forward to talking to you again and thank you so much for all your support. All of your nice comments, they're very inspirational. It keeps me positive, keeps me motivated. If you haven't already, please check out my Facebook group um, that I co-admin with Lindsay from XO Love Lindsay here on YouTube called More Than a Military Spouse. Uh, the link is on my channel page. Uh, it's basically drama free. Yeah, so if you're looking for a military inspired support group, a actual support group where we support each other and we don't like put each other down, definitely join me on More Than a Military Spouse. I would love to have you. If you are a mother or a brother of a military spouse mem or military member, Definitely join the page. You do not have to be a military spouse. You can be a military girlfriend, a fiance, boyfriend, girlfriend. It doesn't matter. Join us. And um, I'll leave you with that. So I will talk to you in a later video. Bye. Summer has come and passed. The innocent cannot.